Right, the camera died again because I run out of memory on the phone because these videos are so bloody big file sizes because I'm recording them in a good quality. Uh, and I just watched one of them and you can see all my scuzzy thing. I had a cold sore here and it looks disgusting. Sorry. Anyway, so this is part C. Reasons to be cheerful. Part C. Hopefully the phone won't die again and I'll end up with part D. It's completely unprofessional. I can't help it. I'm an idiot. Well, I keep saying I'm an idiot, but I'm not an idiot. But I'm not very good at the techno stuff. The videos are there. Having a video split into three bits is a bit annoying, but... At least I'm making the videos. The beauty is, as I've said before, no one's watching, so I'm not bothering anybody. But, uh, yeah, I'm having such trouble with the technology. I don't understand it. I mean, you know, it takes so long to load these the YouTube videos up. It's kind of back in my head a bit. Um, so I'm going to glue these in, and then I'm going to glue these in here, and I'm going to glue that in. So I'm going to pause it, because there's no point in watching it. Right, back, I just thought I'd watch the, how I do this gluing in, because I haven't, I haven't, really, haven't really seen this, even though it's pretty obvious. So I'm just putting glue along the bottom of the piece. Glue along there. Glue on the ends because that's going up against the end of the box and on this end it's going up against the end of the box and then because I've got a stay there and a stay here I'm just going to put a little bit on the sides like that just a tiny bit now it can be quite hard to get these bits in without smearing glue all over the inside of the box getting it in the first first place now I've put this one in loose just so I've got something to push up against so I get it in just the right place. But I haven't, I haven't glued that bit in yet. Now you can see look, that's what I mean, I've got a big smear of glue in. So I'm gonna actually scrape that off. Use my tool that I said you don't need and that I use all the time. It'd be good to get you know, I don't know, it depends on how much you if you get into box making, which you won't, but if you did, or if you are, if you're into it already, you've already got something like this, I imagine, and if you're not, you know, look, this is where it's handy, pulling out those little joints in there, it's really handy, it's actually, because it's so long, it's easier than actually using a bit of grey board, but you could, you can use a bit of grey board, so if I push that down really hard, that's going to help get rid of any bow in the box because there is a bow in this box I can feel it it's gonna get rid of some of that now while that's all there I'm gonna glue these two bits in um, I'm gonna have to put the Castillo in which I don't really want to do and I'm gonna put it close to it so it doesn't rattle around too much but enough to get my finger in <coughs> excuse me so I'm gonna put it there I'll just put a mark on that board and that's too high and that needs sanding off Okay, I'm going to pause it. Right, I've done another Mac Classic. I glued this in and now I've pulled it out again because I've noticed that it was really pushing that, pushing that out quite a lot, making that bow. It's too long, so I need to sand it down. I've made a complete mess in here now. Um, it's a Mac Classic, so I'll wait for that to go off. I'll sand it. You know, I'll get it back to looking quite nice. But I've ripped the, ripped the paper here. When you paint it black, it'll be alright. I'll fix that. Right, so I've prepared that. Well, boys, I've made a bit of a mess, but it's well worth doing that rather than that having that bow in there. I've lost a bit of the paper here, but you won't. It's not going to notice it, right? Then it's, then it's painted black, but you know, I've made it a bit rough in places, but it's fine. You won't notice it. Now, these, I made these ages ago, it seems, seems like I made these hours ago. Now I'm going to measure now, because this is all glued and in place, I'm going to put my um, tuck boxes in, because that's what's going to do that. And I'm going to measure, cut these three, I'm going to sand them off around, and I'm going to seal them with PVA, and I'm going to glue them in. I'll see you again in a bit. Right, 
I'll just show you a little trick I do. Now, I want these 21.3, even though I think it should be 21.4, but I think 21.4 might be too tight. So I'm gonna do 21.3. And because I'm putting it on this bottom one and it's gluing up against the side, it doesn't matter if it's short. It matters a bit if it's short up here because I want it to be onto that. And the one here, I want it to be onto this one. So this one doesn't matter if it's a bit short. So I'm gonna do 21.3 and I can see how well it is there. If you know what I mean, but I'll show you a little thing that I do sometimes when I'm got bits like this. Right, so I'm here and I'll measure 21.3 and I'll put my dot. Now I could measure again over here in 21.3, but one thing I would do, I would now use these lines from here. I would get this line dead straight with my dot on one of these lines. And I always use thin lines, not, not the thick ones. And then I put another dot using the line here. And then that's how I know that's square. Might not be, you know, just, it might not be completely and utterly mega square, but it's square enough for my purposes. And then I do my bendy ruler thing with it down here and down here to hold the thing steady. I'm going through four millimeters, which is tough. And that's how I do that bit sometimes. Just while I'm in the camera before I turn you off. Let's see how it fits in there. That fits lovely in there. That fit quite so lovely in there. So when I come to do that one and this one, I might just add a tiny bit onto it. I'll see you in a bit. Right, just to show you a quick thing. I made for these to dry because I've cut them and sanded them and these cross pieces. So now I've put this bottom one in and now I want to think, I'm thinking about putting these ones in. So what I do, I actually put the top boxes in and have a look. And I'll measure it where the thing needs to go. And it's 16.3. That's what I want. So rather than mark it and that, what I'll do is I'll get these two bits and I'll cut these to 16.3. And then I'll put them in like that. And then when I come to put these in, just dry without gluing that in. I'll then fix these up against there and I'll do one on each side. And it will both, both sides be perfect. So the reason I'm doing that, again, it's just a reminder. What I do here... Right, I'll do my fancy measure, 16.3. So these are just scraps, so I'm just mucking around. And then I do this again. So I'll, put, I'll line that up so that's square on a line, as accurately as I can. The dot is on the line. And then I'll put the dot there. And sometimes that's just a bit easier than measuring twice or using an actual square, because at this stage, I'm not being quite so fussy, nothing square, it's all just a bit random. But these are only spaces anyway. So then I do that, and I cut that up to like that, hold them, put it down, and I wouldn't even bother with the ruler, I'm just cutting like this. Now, I mean, I can see that ain't square at all. You know, that's nonsense, me. That's square. But it's alright, for my purposes. So, you know, I'll do that. And now I can actually cut that up to that and that'll be right. And I'll do the same on the top. I'll put the tuck boxes in and I'll measure what I need and I'll make a little spacer like that. Now, I'm just gluing this one in and it all looks a little bit bendy to me. So I'm just gonna use my angle iron to make sure that's straight before I push that down because the thing's a little bit warped. Right. In there, but not that it matters in these, you know, for these internal bits. But you might well try and get them straight if you can. Uh, I'm just gonna hold that up there and I'll take the spaces out. So. Okay, right, I'm just gonna show you a little thought now. Think about putting this one in like this. Um, now, my thought. I'm thinking about the board, right? 
and the board's going to go in like this, and the board's going to be fine. But lovely. But right, that bit of the board, we've got that much of the board overhanging. And I'm sure, I'm 100% sure the board's fine. But normally, when I make them, I try and get something about here so it stops the board bowing at the end. You know, I want every as much as I can to stop the board bowing. That's why I do all this nonsense. Um, okay, so it's something that I'm considering, you know. So I think, can I change the design to actually get the thing in here and do all that? And, uh, you know, is it worth it? But, you know, I'm going to have a, a spacer in there. Right, and so that's actually going to give it a bit of support halfway through. So I'm thinking, well, actually, it's, it'll be all right. But it's, it's, you know, it's just something to say about how I would consider things and, <coughs> you know, all the different things that, that I would consider and how I might change things while I'm doing it. So I see that and think, oh, maybe I'll change things because I'm kind of making it up on the cut. You know, what I'm doing is I'm doing big areas first before I get into the details of the little areas. But it's always flexible. You know, I'm always being flexible. You know, you, I'm, I'm never stuck to just one thing. So I just thought I'd show that. So, just again to make it clear, right, I've just put this in. I'm using these spacers. I've got another one here, a little one. These are dry. So I've pushed these in with my glue. And it's, you know, I've pushed up against it so my spacers make the thing. But the spacers are dry, so I'll take those out. Now, I measured them to the right thing and now I'll clean up the glue. And then that's in the right place. Hopefully. There's always the chance, you see, when I've done all this, that I've, I've worked, mucked up my calculations. But I have got this space free. And I've got some extra space, but... No, me, I have mucked it up. I muck it up all the time. Because for all my fussiness, I just muck it up. See the bit. Now, I'm just going to say one other thing. Now that I've done that, it's just a thought that came into my head. Now, I've made this and I'm putting all the bits in. And I'm gluing my bits, I'm just gluing them up, up against there. And it's, it's okay, it's not, nothing wrong with that. But if I was being super fussy, and I have been known to be super fussy, off, totally off the charts, or if there's some good reason to do it, and uh, structural integrity reason, I would actually say, for example, this piece, I'd put that on as a single piece, and then I'd put a piece on there to thicken it up, and pieces on here to thicken it up double, and I'd actually make this cross piece joint into that doubleness, so it joints halfway through this double thickness. You know, because these can get knocked. And I would do that sometimes if I was, if there, you know, if there's good reason for it or the opportunity kind of presents itself easily. I mean, I I didn't even consider it on this one until just now. I, I, you know, I wondered about it. So you can do that and th that would make it really structurally, structural integrity, you know. And so it kind of looks a bit like that. I don't know if you can see that, you know. That's kind of set in there, but that's two separate pieces. Imagine if I put one bar across the back, glued that in, and then had those two bits, that would be set halfway in. Mega fussy. So, back again. So, now it's starting to look like a box, isn't it? It's time to get that. Now, I'm going to put this piece in, and then that's all the major structural integrity. Done. The rest will just be boxes, I think. So I'll just do that one last one, actually. Right, this is only two seconds later. So again, all these bits of four. I've still got my four template, but you can see the chaos. You can see how you get lost in it all. You can see how disorganized I am. You might be a bit more of an organized personality. And actually here, there's an off cut of one of those pieces was really long. I've already got an off cut of four, isn't that handy? You've got to be aware of your bits. Right, so I'm back. So, that's starting to look like a box. It's got 
strength to it now with these uh, tough sides. See, the board fits in there nicely. You lift just that little bit of play. I, you know, I'm quite happy to have a little bit of play. All the bits will fit in. So I've just got this bit left now where I've got my five player colours and as I worked out I want five player colours and a bit the tray for all those weird bits which are probably lost them all in this chaos so I've measured this right and it's 21.3 20, across there and it's 10.3 across there now I'm going to leave a bit of play when you've got lots of these little trays in you need to leave a bit of play so I'm going to take three millimeters off each so my working beam is 21.10 now I think I need six trays so the 10 they can all be 10 long like this and they're going to be three and a half wide each one and hopefully they'll all fit in with that three millimeters that i've left spare it's all going to end up being a little bit tight but so what i'm going to do is i'll get a sheet which i have like this right and this is a bit over 10 12. so i'll cut this down to 10 by putting it up Marking 10, marking 10 and cutting along it. And then I'll mark three and a half down here and three and a half down here. So 10 by three and a half. I'll cut one off and I'll use that as a template to cut six more. So and they'll be my bases. And then I will cut one at three and a half, which is the height of the wall. And I will cut loads of them. I'm gonna need two long walls for each one. So I'm gonna need 12 of them. 12 of them at three and a half. And I'll use one of those, and I'll, we'll probably run out of this, and I'll do it for another sheet. And then I'll cut some other ones for, you know, like when, you, when you're doing a thing like this. This is all single walls. You'll go like that, and you'll go like that. And so the actual wall in there is going to be thinner. It's going to be four millimetres thinner than what the width of the base is. Because I'm going to stick these on the top. And... Um, Should I stick them like that? Doesn't really matter either way. Doesn't matter either way. So, uh, so. I'm going to do all that. It's going to take me a long time. I'm going to make a cup of tea and check something, and I'll be back in a minute. Right, so what I'm going to say, guys. Right, so I've got my six bases here, just off that. And there's two things. So now that's that's my ten wide. So I can keep cutting those for the sides because if this is a base, the sides are going to go on the full length like that. So I can still keep using this. But you can see. Now originally, right, I measured 3.5 and 3.5. Now I can see after doing all those cuts ever so slightly, I've just it, I've lost my square. So I've had a, a very small discrepancy in this. So what I'm gonna do. get my carpenter square on this and I'm just going to re-establish my square that was all and then I'm going to cut the walls out which are going to be 3.8 high because I want them 4 high and we've got 2 on the base so 3.8 so I'll do all that sorry and a very quick way to come back right, I'm still doing this and then two seconds later so I'm going to re-establish my square like this push this against this this is straight Put my square on it because it was straight and I'm just going to cut down like this and I've re-established my square you see it's worth doing that because you know, because, you know especially because I measured 3.5 there and I measured 3.5 there I might measure it ever so slightly out or I might made a cut that was just ever so slightly wobbly and that's why I lost my square Anyway, 
blah, you know, I don't know what this video is going to be like. I mean, I imagine this video is going to be a nightmare, but this is a really hard bits video. I didn't know what to do. So I'm back again. So again, I'm still doing this. So instead of measuring 3.8 down and 3.8 down, I've measured 3.8 and now I'm going to do this on the square. This is kind of a bit of a new technique that I'm doing here. But it seems like a good idea, especially as, as this will be my template piece. And what I might actually do, right? You know, this is this is learning as you go. So that's one. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something radical. I'm a radical guy. I'm gonna do this, look. I'm gonna put that in there, and I'm gonna butt my ruler up against that. Get it from there, take that out, take that out, and look, there's another three point. That's the beauty. This is new the new dawn. I made a new dawn, I'm learning. See, I'm always learning. I'm always thinking of techniques, better techniques. How can you improve the technique? Now I thought with the aluminium sheets I was using was an improvement in technique. And it wasn't. So I might be thinking this is an improvement in technique. And it isn't. <laughs> you know? So, two, three. So I'll keep doing this. I'm going to need 12 of these. Four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to have got enough to have this piece. So while I've still got this 10. Here, I'm going to use this as a template on another piece. I'll use it on this before I start cutting it. Right, I've got, I've got new techniques, brilliant, isn't it? Oh, fabulous! Love it. That's gonna, I think I might be using that a lot for all sorts of things. For all sorts of things, that's absolutely fabulous. I can see my blade is really blunt, it's really blunt. Um, I don't know if I'm bothered to change it. Whatever. See you in a bit. Right. So I haven't finished doing this, but I thought I'd just show you know do the last two so you can see how quick this system is. I love this new system. And I'll muck it up now. I've got it on video. You know, I've really hacked, hacked out the stuff. It's a brilliant system. You know, I'm always learning. Learning new ways to do things all the time. This is this is revolutionary. This is nothing short of revolutionary. I mean, look, you're just churning them out. Just dicking around. I mean, you know, I wouldn't take it that long to do these normally, but this is just yes. absolute beauty. I mean, look, I've got. 12 of those for the side wall. They're the bases, six bases. 12 side walls. And then these, I'm gonna have to cut these into uh, 3.1 because these are 3.5. And I'm getting two bits of this on it, so I've got to take four off. So I've got to cut lots of things here at 3.1. Revolutionary, just revolutionary. And what I'm gonna do, I'll, I'll still keep you there, still keep you there, right, you know, now what I'm going to do, because again, I'm not being too fussy, I'm not too worried, I'm going to put 3.1 in there, put my little moon around it, and Jesus, I'm going to use the square, this is just, so, this is just unbelievably radical, that's what's happening here, my life is transformed. And then I can just go along here and I can just do I can do the same again. As long as that's square to the thing, that's gonna be a little bit hard to make sure everything's square to the to the oak. But when I'm mucking around doing these little things, the accuracy isn't quite so important. I can already feel that it's that's a little bit know if things are square. So remember I'm always using the same one as a template. Oh shit. Sorry, let me see my language. I'm rushing you see. Shouldn't be rushing. I've got to cut 12 of these little lighters. Oh, I 
to stop actually and uh, make sure they fit so I'm not making a mistake. Now you see this, that's not as good as the other one because I, I can't be sure what's going on. That's my template so let's just take a base of two sides. Right, so I've got to cut out 12 of these, two for each one. I'll see you in a bit. Right, I've got all these pieces out. Yeah, look. I've got six bases, 12 sides, and 12 inners. Right, and now I'm going to make these. Now this is different to all the other ones, these are, these are single ones, you know, like I'm going to put a base in here, I'm going to glue that on there, and I know that's all vertical, and I'm going to glue a little base on here, I'm going to use that to keep it all vertical, and then I'm going to glue a little base on there, keep that vertical, and I'm going to get one in here, and I'm going to use that to keep that all vertical, and I'll glue that together, and then I've got loads of tape sorted out, and, uh, and I'll tape it together. And uh, yeah, but this is the same principle. You could, I mean, my boxes are ball gate boxes. They're all double thickness and lap jointed and all that. You could just make a ball game bo box like this on a big scale. Be you know ten times quicker. Wouldn't be anywhere near as strong. Wouldn't last as strong. But it would be as strong as the ball game boxes you buy. You know, like I've got a Zaya box there. That's made out of two millimetre grey board. Something like the El Grande box isn't two millimetres, it's like one and a half or something, so it's a bit more floppy. But uh, you could just make a box like that. But anyway, I'm going to make one, show you how I'm going to make one, and then I'll turn you off. Put that there. Now, can you see the? Can you see my tray there? Yeah. Now I don't bother doing all that kind of stuff, I'm just going to dip that in, dip that in, put a whole lot there, bash that on, squeeze that on, and then dip that in on the bottom and on the side where it's going to join here, get that in there, and squeeze that in, Doop. like that, this is the same, dip again, dip in the side, make sure you glue all the way down. Oh, I know what I should have done. I should have checked all the caballeros going to fit in it now, for sale. Now, dip that one in. Now, I made a bit of a mistake there. On those side ones, I should have dipped, dipped the two sides because on this now, I've got to dip the face, and that's a bit not as good as dipping the sides. I, I should have done the sides on the, on the sides. Be uh, neater and easier. Because when you do this, you, you're just getting loads of glue everywhere, right? Do that. Use this uh, little thing to try and push it all together. And again, I'm not going to pack on some kites. This is a good way. Make this thing quite square. Try and push that in. Oops, I have messed up. I've not got enough glue on the bottom. It's a bit weird, I don't know what's going on there. It's let me down. It needs to let me down again. Right, well, let's just turn it around. That's what we'll do. You get an off cut to push that up against the thing. Push that all together. Push that. Get that. Right, we've got a little box here that's all very wet and it's all a bit struggly. It's alright, don't mind. These don't have to be that accurate, they're only stupid little. See, it's come off now. You've got to watch the glue, because there's glue everywhere. And I'll push that off. There's glue everywhere, it's a real mucky, it's a real mucky business. Now, while that's there, I'll grab a bit of this and I'll put one of them on. Let's try and hold that in. I'll do it on this side. Now, again, these aren't that, um, these aren't that accurate. But, yeah, because there's glue everywhere. And I found that bog off. I should have got some more bog off before I did this. I've been thinking about getting my bog off. I fear for that 
two hours. Put this on there. Now, if there's any discrepancies and bits sticking over, which there will be because I haven't actually tried to cut these mega accurately. And I've got my new technique, which is a bit crap. Because I can see already that uh, I've got a massive overlap on the bottom there. The base is too big. So right, I'll just sand all that off when I get to it. But now I'll put the tape on that. Because I mean, you know, I'm not going to do a mega sand on these like I did on the other one. But I will do a bit of a sand. I wish I had some more shorter bits of this big angle iron. It's a little bit massive. It's very handy for getting the verticals. You know? Yeah, oh well. So, those bases are a bit, a bit out. Little box. It's all, it's a little bit over the, over doing. Now you can see I've got glue there on the, yeah, on the inside. So I use my metal tool on the one that you shouldn't have, and I said you shouldn't have, and this is where it actually comes into its own, getting into tricky spaces. And get all that glue out. So, now, I know that seems to take a little while, but now I come to do the rest of these, it won't actually take, take that long to, to make these. Not, not to make them in this form. Hope the caviar is going to fit in there. Yeah, they're going to fit in there easy. Not the nicest little player pieces, but little um, player, player things. But you know, you know, I've got plenty of player there. I just hope I can fit them in the other way. Right. I'll see you later. I've got six of these to make. I just thought, you know, like this is only the next box I'm making. But that discrepancy in the base, right, that's sticking out, you can see there. Maybe. That's sticking out a little bit, right, and that's because this isn't wide enough. That needs to be a bit wider. Now the reason that isn't wide enough is because I measured it. You know, I measured these three point whatever. Now I measure this three point whatever. Different. And so the reason they're out is because of my discrepancy in my measuring. You know, so if you're measuring two things at 3.6 or whatever, or one at 3.6 and one at 3.1 and you want them to be the difference, the same difference, you can be out a bit and that causes that. So that's why, what I should have done, when I have my 3.6, well no, it's 3.5 isn't it, 3.5, instead of measuring 3.1, I should have used two of these at 4 mil. And use that as a template, you know, by putting the thing up there and then putting the two on the top like that, like I do for the other things, to make a, to bring it down by four mil instead of measuring a four mil difference. You know, you just want to try as much as, as you know, every time you've got something to measure, and I'm not particularly thinking because I'm rushing because this video is taking forever. And, uh, you know, every time you've got a measure to do, think, can I do it without measuring? Anyway, see you later. Right, Alan. Now, I've made these six boxes. Now, a few things have happened in this time. It's interesting. First thing, I've made these and I've been using these angle iron. This is a dead blade. Now, this is why they're still handy. They're not completely dead. I can scrape all the glue off it. Now, and uh, on all these things, on all these bits of metal, on these angle irons, you need to be able to scrape the glue off, otherwise you're not going to be flat and straight anymore. So they still have great worth. And you know, this is this one's going to be covered in glue. Right? So I'll scrape that off. So even your dead blades aren't dead yet. Very handy. That's one thing. No bad. Now the second thing is interesting. Now I was making these, and they're all wrong. They're all sticking out a bit, all of them, because of my poor measuring. 
but I don't mind that. But that's going to take a bit more work when I come to sand these down because I just give them a light sand normally and now I've got to do a bit of work to get rid of that. Now I've done five of them and before I did the sixth I just thought right I better just check them because that's for the five playing pieces I want to say. And then originally right what I was planning to put into here was these little pieces and these tiles and then I thought the knob if it could fit in there I'll chuck that in as well or I'll put it there. You know, I hadn't really given a lot of thought to all this. And so, but then I noticed, because originally I'd thought that these were going to fit in here. And I noticed I've made them this size and they don't fit in there. And I wanted them to go in that way rather than that way. Because if they go in that way, they fall over. And, you know, and I'd be able to make them that way so they could come out. And it wasn't ideal, but I hadn't given it that much thought. So, you know, it's just a bit like, maybe I should have given it more thought. So then I thought... But I wonder if I can get something wider in there. And I had the bit here, 3.8. And I thought, well, once I sand off those bottom bits, could I get that in there? Because that this requires a 3.8 for it to go in. And it was all going to be a bit tight. And then I put these in it. And there wasn't really room for these, you know. And, and it was perfect for these bits in the knob. And I was a bit like, well, what am I going to do with these? These are like weird. You know, I was thinking they can be, be a bit odd if they're just isolated somewhere and then it dawned on me that this bit that's all the base game and this bit is all the expansions right now these bits only work with the expansions I think you don't put them in the base game so it says on the thing and so suddenly I thought because I left this room here because I was thinking you need fingers to get it out I thought I could actually put them in there. I could make a little pocket for them in there, right? And if I make it four tall, they're not going to fall out. And then suddenly they've gone into the area of the expansions rather than one expansion being mucked into the base game. So that's really pretty cosmic. And it goes to show why I don't fully design and work it out. Even though, you know, because it takes so long to work everything out to perfection. And I can't, you know, spending that time is like, oh, I just want to make the box. And so, but as you're going, things change and things happen and you see things. And sometimes, if you're open to it, of which I try to be, sometimes it just feels like something's guiding your hands or there's something else going on. Because in the end of the day, that's a really good solution. I'm really happy with that solution. I still have room to get the tuck boxes out, but these will have their own little room, own little place that you'll be able to get them out of, living where they belong. And that's because I didn't plan and think hard enough. I left, I left room for something to happen, you know, and uh, and that's why I love box making. Well, why I love lots of things, but. Uh, you know, I, I love it when, when, when things like that happen, it, you know, it makes me, makes me think, oh yeah, great, you know, there's, and I know that when that kind of thing happens, then I've been on the right track, you know, and, uh, yeah, something's good about it. So now this is really starting to feel like a, like a box. I don't like this, I don't like this solution, with these bung on. Yeah, so they're, they're just like wibbly wobbly, and it's just like a bit pooey. This goes in. And then we'll have the, let's just test to see whether the cabinet, cabinet arrows could go in there. They will fit lovely in there. So you can pass them out. I mean, they're going to be tipped on the table anyway, you're not going to be picking them out of there. It's a bit fiddly looking for the Grande worker and the off piece, but. Can I really be bothered to make something really complicated and complex just two pieces? So it's just going to get bunged out on the floor anyway? Nah, not going to do that. It's stuck in the big glue. The glue's not dry, you see, I've got to wait for it all to dry.
and I'm not tipping now for that solution to I'll, get, I'll put them in a different baggie I'll put them in a better size baggie because so, you know not tipping now for that but that's all right I don't mind that and then this goes in and hopefully none of that should kind of fall out I mean you know in theory you know things wobble about and stuff in there but, but nothing falls out which is what I'm looking for nothing falling out because I'm not trying. So, getting this. So I, I need to make a little bit for this. I'll do do that now. And I need these to dry. And then I'm going to sand these off. I'm going to take the edges. And I, I'm going to cover them in brown paper. But I don't know if I'll um, do that tonight. It's pretty late. I'll do this. I might leave that tomorrow. But then that's going to make another part of the video so probably what I'll do I think I've shown you everything there let's just see how the lid fits on still good still good we've still got the disaster of the paint to come that's what I'll do after this but I can't do that now I'm too tired and I don't want to make another part so I've shown you where everything goes I'll make the little bit here that is awful Maybe a solution will come for that. And I'll sort those out and then I'll show you those at the start of the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I know you're not watching, no one's watching. I always say that, but I, I know that's going to be true. Not this far down the line. I might get some watching the earlier ones. So, goodbye and thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow.